Okay, let me say, let me read it first. Yeah, read it. So it's two, the overall reaction is 2NO plus Br2 goes to NO, 2NO Br. The first reaction, the fast one, NO plus Br2 uh, goes reversible, goes to NO Br2. Second one, NO Br2 plus NO, only a forward reaction goes to NO Br plus NO Br. What's the right one? Okay, notice a couple things. First of all, the second step is the rate determining step. This is a noticeably more difficult problem now. Uh, it's solved differently than the one we just did. So whenever the rate determining step is not first, it's a different kind of problem. Also, notice now we are adding in a reversible step. So see the forward reaction has a rate, K1, and the reverse reaction has a different rate, because it's a different reaction, and it, I just call it K1 prime. So it's a K1 with a little prime mark right there, just to show it's reversible. Other people sometimes write K negative 1 to mean reversible. Whatever. As long as you remember it's the reverse K, you're cool. Now, how do you solve this? This has a different method of solving. Remember, the rate is determined by the slow step. So let's write that. Rate, and specifically it's rate 2, it's the second reaction, is K2. Now all the reactants, NO, Br, 2, times NO. And th that, in a sense, is my answer, but there's a major problem here. The major problem is... Uh, this is an intermediate. I cannot have intermediates in my answer. Analogous to when I bounce redox, I can't have electrons in my answer because they're intermediates. In the same way, I cannot have an intermediate in my answer. For the most, uh, the easiest way to think about it is I can't measure this concentration. So this is useless to have a rate law that is not measurable in a laboratory because I can't measure the concentration of an intermediate. So I must remove those for this rate law to become practical in lab. Okay, so here's where it gets complicated. Now I have to access the fast step. And what's true about fast steps is the following. For a fast step, the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. Or forward equals reverse. That's going to be true for fast steps. Forward will equal reverse. Okay, so now let's write uh, and take a look at the reactions on your page. Let's write out the reactions. The forward reaction, rate 1, is K1 times uh, the concentration NO times the concentration Br2. Question? Yes. No, slow reactions are not going to be reversible. The questions aren't the slow reactions are reversible. They're not going to be. And if you're ever not sure, we're going to label the arrows appropriately for you so you know what's reversible and what's not. Okay. And then this equals the reverse K1 prime times the reverse reaction would be NOBR2. Now you might be wondering, why the heck would I care about the fast reaction. Well, the cool thing about it, look at this. There's our intermediate that's up here. See that? And that's not an intermediate. And this is not an intermediate. So if I solve for my intermediate, I can plug it in to my original <coughs> equation and have an equation or a rate law that does not have an intermediate in it. Let me do that so you can see what that would look like. Solve for NOBR2, a.k.a. solve for my intermediate. That's K1 over K1 prime times NO times BR2. I've just solved for my intermediate. Now I'm going to combine this equation a little bit, and this equation. Combine those two. Basically plug in. NOBR2 to the top equation in black. 
Let's do that. Rate 2, which is my rate of reaction, it's the slow step, is equal to K2 times NOBR2, which is right here. That's K1 over K2, uh, K1 over K1 prime, sorry, times NO times BR2. And then finally times another NO. See the second NO right here? Square. Now I have a rate law that does not have an intermediate in it. And I have my answer. Yes? How do you know that that's an intermediate? How do I know that NOBR2 is an intermediate? If you look at your reaction, so look at your page, this page here. Mm -hmm. Do you see how the overall reaction does not have NOBR2, the reaction at top? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't appear there, it's an intermediate. So everything that does not appear in the overall reaction is called an intermediate. It cannot be contained, it cannot be bottled. Other questions? Yes, where are you? Yes, you could have many, many intermediates. And that's when it gets really crazy. Um, let me give you another problem that we're going to do next time. Here. And, uh, for you to do this one at home, you can assume that the second step is slow. Okay? So solve this for the second step being slow. But uh, actually, what we're going to do next time, I'm not going to, I'm going to show you a way to solve this where you don't care which step is slow. You just solve. Okay? So there's going to be a, this is going to get us into the third case. But you can solve this another way if you assume the second step is slow. Uh, and you can go ahead and try that and see how that works. Uh, otherwise, I think we're done. I don't know if I even